every once in a while I have to make a video like this just to remind you of what's going to happen what's coming upon the earth even though this message is not popular it will be disbelieved in many circles that's okay I'm a herald I'm a warner I warn people and I'm not a prophet no no that the, the things I am going to tell you today have already been prophesied. I'm a teller of things that have already been prophesied. Don't know the official name for a kind of person like that, but... A believer in Ohio sent me a video this morning that was really, really amazing. It was a great video, and I'm glad that uh, Morgan... Weaver of Ohio sent me uh, this video. It was my video. It was from the Revelation series. It was number 138 called Homemade Christian Evils. I made it from the bunker in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I have not seen it in probably two years. I made it probably three years ago. Yes, three years ago. It was about how Christianity is so hypocritical and that in this they are complete imitators of the Pharisees of our Lord's day, who Jesus gave the perfect analogy of them. He says, you people strain out a gnat and you swallow a camel. And the Pharisees were concerned about different vessels to be used in the, in the temple, what they should be wearing. Uh, they were inventing minutia of how People should behave themselves. In the meantime, they killed the Messiah. Yeah, talk about straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel. You can't get much better of an example than that. And yet, the Pharisees were the ancient Christians. Though They were Christians. They were the prototype of today's Christianity because Christianity today is doing the same thing. My sister is going to link you to number 138 in the 800 number Revelation series, uh, Homemade Christian Evils. And um, I'm kind of on fire there and I was impressed myself by watching myself on that video because I'm going through another depressing day today. It's just, it really encouraged me to, to watch that. And I realized that I, I'm, I'm really only happy when I'm talking to you you know, about God and these things that are important, and these things that are impending, these things that are coming. So how is Christianity today doing the same thing that the Pharisees did? Because they're, they're inventing their own evils. They're inventing things to fight. They're inventing false fires so they can put out these fires. In the meantime, Satan works a greater evil in their midst. I'll just touch on this briefly before getting to the topic du jour. Um, the biggest evil coming from Christianity is that God is going to torment people for eternity in fire if they don't love him, if they don't respect him properly and do what he says. This is an incalculable evil. This is coming out of their mouths that God is going to burn people forever. And I'm sorry, if you're a Christian, you're complicit. You're sitting there in the pew knowing that this body of people believes these things. Going to get to that in a second. And while they're spewing these repulsive lies from the pulpit, they are telling us that the worst evils that we need to fight are things like alcohol and pornography and we need to get involved with politics because we need to fight abortion. Well, listen, I'm not for abortion. I hate abortion. It's horrible. And that's a worthy cause. But even that cause pales, even that evil, pales in comparison with the evil of the teaching of eternal torment. And so Christianity, just like the Pharisees, they're paying attention to the wrong thing. They're straining out minutia, and they're swallowing the biggest freaking ten-humped camel 
that you could swallow. They're turning the world off of God by their doctrines of eternal torment. Which is why God is going to get rid of Christianity. Get rid of it violently. All religions are going to be violently deposed by God. And this is the message I'm bringing you again today. I brought it to you before. I'm the only guy out there saying this. People in my own camp, they don't like to talk about God coming out and killing people because we're a message of grace. Paul's evangel, yes, yes, and yes. But even Paul, the evangelist of grace, writes in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 of God coming in flaming fire, dealing out vengeance. Paul says that. The apostle of grace, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, read it for yourself. In flaming fire, dealing out vengeance. What kind of vengeance is God going to deal out? It's a tough topic, but I'm kind of glad you asked. I'm still here. I'm taking pauses to puff on my cigar. If you're not watching the wall cam, you don't realize that. That's why you should be watching the wall cam. As I've said before, the revelation, the coming indignation, the tribulation, whatever you want to call it, is about religion and politics. It's about God displacing human religion and human politics with divine religion and divine politics. The only divine religion is that of the, that of the Jews, which God is going to institute on the earth for 1,000 years. Human religion and human politics is all false. It's all a caricature of the true. That's a nice way to say it. It's mainly idolatrous. And God is going to unleash, pay, 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 pay close attention to this. God, soon, within the next seven years, is going to unleash 200 million supernatural Calvary, cavalry, sorry, horsemen upon the inhabitants of the earth and a third of the human race is going to die. These are days like the days of Noah. And I always need to remind people of this. I don't mind doing it. This is my job. That in the days of Noah, approximately 8 billion people were killed by God and he left eight people on the earth it's not like God hasn't done this before it's not like he can't raise people he kills from the dead this is why God is the only one who is allowed to kill and he does not break his own law by killing the law says thou shalt not commit murder murder is a crime killing not, necess not necessarily so all murder is killing, but not all killing is murder. God's motives are good. They always are. And so he needs and wants to cleanse the earth. And as I've said to you before, I told you I wasn't going to forget Revelation during my talks on Paul, just as I did not forget Paul during my talks on Revelation. God cleanses not by gradual reformation, not by people slowly becoming enlightened. No, it is by violent overthrow. And that violent overthrow includes wiping out the four main religions of the earth, which, is, which are Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, and Christianity. This is why millions of Christians will die by the hand of God soon. I would say, if you want me to give a guess, 2024 at the latest. If you don't know why I say that date, this is 2018 as I'm talking to you, it's because of the chronology of the Bible. You'd have to go back to my Revelation series and go through that whole part of the series called the final years of Millennium Six, and you will know my reasoning behind that. 
along that line, people ask me, Martin, you made such a big deal out of the constellation on September 23rd, the Virgo constellation and Leo and the planets and the stars. And uh, haven't heard you talking about that lately, Martin. Uh, I guess you don't believe that anymore. Huh. Well, let me tell you here today, yes, I, I absolutely do still believe that. That was a tremendous sign. It was an undeniable sign. It was an obvious sign. And then there was a, in, an insemination comet that came nine months before the birth and went right through the loins of Virgo. Unbelievable. Uh, th 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 this was God like in your face, like I'm winding it down. It was a signpost. Now, at the time, we were debating whether or not this thing was a signpost or whether it was a catalyst, whether it kicked something in. It wasn't a catalyst. We talked about that. I wasn't sure if it was a catalyst or a signpost. I think I did com come to the realization that it was a signpost, just like the Star of Bethlehem was a signpost. Because 10 years after the Star of Bethlehem, which was supernatural, and the wise guys followed it to find the Christ, 10 years after that, Jesus is still an unknown boy in Nazareth. 10 years after the almighty sign, the great sign, it will cause a lot of people to doubt the sign. Uh, we heard that some great star was gonna show us the birth of the Messiah. Huh? Guess not. 10 years, not. It took 30 years for our Lord to begin his public ministry to announce that he was the Messiah. So 30 years after the sign was plenty of time for everyone to doubt the sign. Doubt the sign. And I remind you that the heavenly bodies are put into outer space four times in seasons. Four of that. That's what they're for. I think that's Genesis 1-6 or something. Read all of Genesis, you'll find it. There are four signs. That's why they're there. They're not up there for Jiminy Cricket to write songs about. Or the fifth dimension. The moon in the seventh house. Jupiter aligns with Mars. I love these songs, but they're signs so that we can keep track of times. And so it's no game for people to be playing around in church. It's not neutral. It's not a place you can. You just should go. I am warning everyone again. I feel like a lone prophet. And sometimes I, f I feel like a prophet. I'm not a prophet, but I feel like one sometimes. Because prophets, they're like all depressed. And they go a little mad, it seems like. God had Isaiah prophesy naked for a year. That, I think that was Isaiah. That would have been, hey, fine with me. Solve my clothing issues. Who was it that God had take a wife of harlotry? Was that Hosea, take a wife of harlotry to prove that Israel had played the harlot? Yeah, I'll take a wife of harlotry. What does it matter? If God tells me to do it, I'll do it. But of course, we know God does not tell us things today in the manner that Hosea or Isaiah heard them. He tells us things through the scripture. And what I'm telling you is in Revelation chapter nine, there are 200 million supernatural horsemen, a supernatural cavalry that will come forth from beneath the earth and they will kill. And watch my lips closely. They will kill with fire and sulfur. I will now pause and give some in my audience time to laugh. Go ahead. I will take another puff of my cigar. Watch my lips again. The supernatural cavalry, the horsemen of Revelation chapter 9, numbering 200 million. They kill with fire and sulfur. And I don't care if I'm mocked for being a stupid literalist. I know more about figures of speech used in the Bible than probably... 95% of my audience. And my knowledge is rudimentary. But if you haven't looked at Bollinger's figures of speech used in the Bible, then you don't, you don't understand what's literal and what's figurative in the book of Re Revelation. 
Just the introductory notes in the concordant version gives you a cursory understanding of figures of speech, which will save you loads of trouble. It has saved me loads of trouble. I can speak with confidence that these horsemen are literal and the death is literal and a third of mankind is killed and God's done it before and those who are in churches, those who are parts, a part of religion are in danger of being killed if they don't get out of religion. As Revelation says, come out of her, come out of her, my people, speaking of Babylon, which will be the literal Babylon, a city rebuilt soon-ish. Speaking of Noah, Jesus compared these days to the days of Noah. Yes, Martin Center believes another Bible story. Noah. I guess uh, I'm in good company because Jesus Christ treated Noah as a, an historic personage. As in the days of Noah, he said, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus believes a Bible story. Yes, well, Noah is historical fact. God did wipe out every inhabitant of the planet Earth except for eight people. So really, in the coming days, it, uh, not, not so bad, only a third, only a third. So we're talking what, two or three billion? Hmm, okay, okay. But Martin, you believe in the salvation of all. How can you be talking like this? Yes, I believe in the salvation of all, but I'm not a fatalist. I'm not a consummationist. I don't hang my hammock on the consummation and ignore what God is doing in the interim. Paul is calling people to faith. Paul is almost desperately sending his friends out to make sure that the believers believe the evangel, that they got every element of it, the death of Christ for sin. He warned people about sinning. Don't be sinning, Paul said. He's not living in the absolute viewpoint that all is of God. Martin, should I get drunk and go rob a bank? No, don't. But you said all is of God. Yeah, how many times do I hear that? I want to make some videos about the absolute versus the relative perspective because there's still some gross darkness covering the peoples concerning this topic. So Jesus treated Noah as a historic personage, which he was. Our Lord was, I would say, with it. He knew. And um, so I am a herald. I feel like John the Baptist sometimes too, calling out in the wilderness. I live in a wilderness. I'm not talking about geographically. I'm not talking about, talking about a wilderness of darkness. And while the world goes on, marrying, giving in marriage, eating and drinking and having a good time and having no idea what's happening, uh, that's the first sign that something's about to happen. That's the first sign. Jesus actually gave that as a sign that people don't think anything's happening. Ah, Martin, you said that this great celestial thing happened in the sky. Martin, nothing's happening. Yeah, that's the first sign. In fact, things will look good. And yet here's this herald in front of a brick wall in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, telling you that millions of Christians are slated to die, to be supernaturally killed because they are idolaters, because they are not worshiping the true God. Idolatry is worshiping an image, not an image of the true, but a false image. That's why, Jesus, that's why God hated idolatry because he didn't want anybody to get the wrong idea about him. Do you, do you realize why the whole thing in the Old Testament, read about it, it's idolatry, how horrible idolatry is. Why is it so bad? Because people get a wrong idea of God. God hates for people to get a wrong idea of him. So right away he creates an image, Jesus Christ. This will give people the right idea of me. But the Christians aren't worshiping Jesus Christ. They're worshiping, they're worshiping a false Jesus Christ. Paul says it well in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, you're worshiping another Jesus. That's the idol. That's the false idol. He doesn't even look like the real Jesus. He doesn't act like the real Jesus because he sends people to hell for eternity. The real Jesus doesn't do that. If you're reading a correctly translated scripture. 
So they're idolaters. I don't care how, but Martin, they're so nice. I don't care, it doesn't matter. The Pharisees were nice. The people that lived in the days of Noah were nice. This is not about nice. It's about cleansing the earth. And the earth needs to be cleansed once, once again. It was cleansed once, it's going to be cleansed again. This time, it's not going to be followed by another wicked eon. It's going to be followed by the first good eon since the disruption of the world, which will be followed by an even better eon, the new heavens and the new earth. As for us, as for me, we're living in the tail end of the wicked eons. Not only that, but we're living in the tail end of the most evil eon there has ever been, eon three. This is the eon that crucified the Lord of glory. I don't know about you, but... Mm, I'm not liking it. 